What's up, everybody? Welcome to Buzz Worthy TV, and I'm your girl, Lady T. Y'all, I won't be on here long. I just want to finish what I started. So, did y'all catch that lame ass, whack ass part two of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? The reunion last night. If y'all didn't, I am mad at y'all. I'm pretty sure y'all had like a thousand other things that y'all'd rather be doing. And if y'all did see it, wasn't it like watching paint dry? So, like I said, I'm not going to be on here long because I'm just, I'm just not in fools. Like, Mona Scott Young, we just need to have a real heart-to-heart -heart about what we just experienced here on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta this year. Like, all the contrived storylines, all these people getting into it on social media so they can make up storylines. I'm just sick of it. And then, now it's becoming a trend. Because now that they don't start doing it, you start to see other people, you know, trying to get in on social media, store up storylines for the next season. Like, you can always tell when a season of reality show is coming out. Because everybody start getting into it. Everybody's all on social media. And it's just like, really? I mean, why can't we get some really good riveting storylines it's plenty of people out here that got real drama going on that don't have to play up for the camera that don't have to be extra don't got to sleep with this one or that one just for a storyline i'm just saying just go to the local hood mama scott young stop trying to sit up there and find the next your next jocelyn or your next tommy on instagram go to your regular hood and then you will get the reality tv that you need Cause this shit right here, it ain't popping no more. It's just not popping no more. I'm just saying. So, I spent too much time on this video already. Like, this video's supposed to be done. That's how much I care. Like, this video's supposed to have been done in two minutes. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's talk about the lame stuff first. Rashida Kurt. Jock, I don't even know why the hell they were there. Moving on. So, then, let's talk about Tommy. They're talking about how Tommy is crazy, and, you know, they're going back and playing back scenes of all the crazy shit she did throughout the season. And I'm like, Tommy is not crazy. She's an actress, okay? She know what she doing. Like, <laughs> come on now. I mean... It's a camera in front of her face, so she gonna act a fool. She gonna cool for them coins, so whatever. But I hope she does get help, because I do believe that she does have an alcohol problem. But y'all cannot tell me that a lot of her antics is not just for TV. Like, come on, we all are way too smart for this. Okay, so let's talk about Tierra, Tia, Beck, whatever the hell she want to call herself. Like, I'm sick of all these... You know, a, you know, all these different names these people want to go by. Like, uh, like I heard Mulan Christopher don't go by Mulan Christopher no more. He go by someone, something else. I don't know. Like, get in there. Stick to your name. Stick to your government name. Like, anyway, Tierra, Tia, whatever her name is, she is on here talking about she hasn't been this scrap because... She just don't think it'll be good because she's married now. And she's pregnant, so it'll be disrespectful to her marriage to go see Scrap. Without taking their son or whatever. King. So, but here's my thing. Tia, Tia, whatever the hell you want to call yourself. Use another one. Use another one and I'm over. Because you said you married and you pregnant. And it wasn't Scraps, baby. It wasn't um, that DJ that you were seeing, baby. It's your husband's baby. So, you weren't with Scrap or the DJ. You were just playing that off of the camera. You were just acting, huh? Because it don't add up. So, I dare you to say that you weren't acting. That you were dating Scrap and then the DJ. And then you heard up a guy with this man that's now your husband. If you did, girl, you sure do get around. If that's the truth, if that's how it came about... You sure do get around. And then we go on to Tammy. You know, Tammy is sitting down talking about 
her relationship with Waka. They not at this particular point, they not together, they not divorced, but she done moved out the house and her and Deb, they still family will always be family, yada yada yada. Look, they already back together. I hope they can work it out. If they can, I'm happy for them. Moving on. Um, let's see. Mama D and this geriatric antics with Mama D artist and Miss Charlene or whatever. Like Mama D's a little bipolar, whatever. Ernest, uh, we gotta pray for him. You know, he had an aneurysm and so he had you know, he hasn't been well, he's been in the hospital or whatever, so we gotta pray for his health. Uh, Miss Charlene, she just there, I don't know. Like like I'm telling y'all, like this was just some lame shit. Like literally. Okay. So, then, I want to talk about Carly. So, let's get into this thing about Carly. So, Carly is sitting down there with life. And they talk about, of course, their relationship and how he gave her this fake ring. Talking about it's a promise ring because he promised that she'll never find another man as good as him. And I'm like, both of y'all need to go somewhere and sit down. Because, Carly, I'm sick of you every freaking season. You got a new man or two. Like, I could be real graphic, but all I'm going to say is, you should be worn out by now. Yo should be like, hold on. Hold on, y'all. Like, like, like this big. Okay, can y'all see that? No way. I'm going to do it better. This big. It should be like this big, y'all. Like, her should be this big. Okay? Like, you should be worn out. So, yeah. Like, not this big, y'all. Like, this big. Like, I can't even make a full circle. Like, her. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry, but she been ran through. Anyway, so, then we got this whole thing, how life is like, you know, I wasn't. With her, I'm talking about getting this girl pregnant. He's saying that when he dated old girl, she wasn't pregnant. That's not his baby. Blah blah blah. And I'm just like, y'all just need. They sitting up here arguing. I'm like, y'all just need to go somewhere and sit down because both of y'all was only, only here for each other for a storyline. That's the only reason why y'all messing around with each other. She needed a storyline. He needs to be on love and hip hop just to get himself out there again. You know what I'm saying? And life. Like everybody else said, you better be dropping some music because right now you look as dumb as hell. I'm just saying. So it better be a method to your madness. Okay. Then let's go to Mimi, Chris, and Ariane. Okay. So Chris is upset because her whole thing is that she feels as though Mimi used her for a storyline while Chris was really into her. She was like Mimi. I love Mimi more than she loved me. And she lose me for a storyline. And you know they go on to ask her. What did she identify herself with. And Chris says I identify myself as male. She was like you know. Some people can't afford. The surgery. But that doesn't. That shouldn't be able to stop them from. Identifying who they feel inside. What they feel inside or whatever. And I feel that too. Um. But what really had me interested in this whole little sit down was the fact that Ariane was constantly like going back and forth with Chris. And I'm like, but why though? I'm like, Ariane, are you mad at because Chris screwed your girl? Because we all know, come on. You've been waiting for a taste of that Mimi. We already know that. Like, Hold on, y'all. My phone ringing. Okay. So, we all know that Arian has been trying to screw Mimi since, heck, probably before the show even started. So, she all up in Chris's face because she just mad. She just sexually frustrated and Mimi won't give her none. So, she got to take it all out on Chris. And, Chris, I wish you would have gotten up and just smacked the crap out of Arian because I was sick of her. Like, seriously. I was just plain sick of her. And... 
You know, they asked Mimi what she identified as. And she says, before, well, actually, before Mimi could even respond, Ariane is like, I told y'all she's a lesbo. I'm like, you want her to be a lesbo so bad so she can eat you out so bad, don't you, Ariane? Like, I'm just sick of you. Shut down and shut up. So, anyway, Mimi just says that she's sexually fluid, and she leaves it at that. So, let's get into the meat and the potatoes of this whole little reunion. Well, I should say this part two of this reunion. So, we remember we had left off with Jocelyn letting producers know that she's pregnant. They don't believe that she's pregnant because she never mentioned it. They've been seeing her out at clubs. So, the producer's like, look, I need you to take a test. And I'm like, here we go with the fuck shit again. The fuck shit never ends on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Look, y'all again doing this for the cameras. All of a sudden, she had to take a pregnancy test on camera again. Like, is this deja vu? Is this Love and Hip Hop season one? I thought this was Love and Hip Hop season five, the reunion part two. I didn't, like I said, I didn't know that we had went back and traveled back in time and we watched it. Love and Hip Hop Season 1, okay? Like, so she takes the pregnancy test. Of course, it's positive. And so the producers go get Stevie. Of course they do. And, you know, Stevie comes in there. She tells him that she's pregnant. And he, of course, said, is it mine? She gets offended. And I'm like, but why? Y'all know how y'all get down. Y'all know that y'all do any and everything with each other without each other. Now, granted, I know her whole thing is when she does threesomes, it's with him and other chicks. It's never with another dude. So, I, I kind of get why she was a little offended, but come on. You can't get mad from asking the question. Y'all haven't been together, like, for real, for real. Like, this ain't just no regular breakup, how y'all get mad and then get back together. Y'all ain't been messing around for a good three months. So, he has every right to ask. But she gets offended, and she was like, you know, you know, I ain't been with nobody else. I've been with girls, but I ain't been with nobody else. And so they start going back and forth, and then he leaves. Because basically, he wants an apology. His whole thing is that, look, you been defaming my name all on social media. And she was like, I'm not going to apologize to you. You apologize to me. And I guess a lot of, you know, Jocelyn's problem with a lot of this is coming from is the fact that I think a lot of things went down behind closed doors y'all I really do I do think that he acts as her pimp like he's really controlling he won't let her do nothing everything's always centered around him like when he does stuff for her it's you know it's like in a controlling way. Like, he never lets her do what she wants to do. He has to have his hand and everything. And I think she got tired of it. And that's what we're seeing. Now, granted, she's been messy as hell. And I've been really wanting to drag her. Like, that's all y'all. If I would have really reviewed this whole season, I would have been dragging Jocelyn every single review. But I do think it's a lot of things that happen behind closed doors. And she's rebelling. So she's like, I'm not going to apologize until you apologize for how you treated me. And he's like, he's not going to apologize. But anyway, he comes back, they sit down, and she does apologize. She was like, you know, I loved you, and, you know, basically, I'm sorry, but you was the only, you know, you was the only man I love. And, you know, he apologizes, too, for all the things that he's done in the past. And, supposedly, they they walked away good. They hugged it out. They were good. Well, they do a little update. And, of course, we all know Stevie and Jocelyn, they still beefing. I really feel bad because, regardless, we laugh and this shit is good for TV. But, when y'all start bringing babies into this fuck shit, I have a problem with it. So now she's pregnant, she's about to bring an innocent life into this world, and all they doing is steadily, you know, turn up for the TV on this fuck shit. Same thing with all these other people, like Amina Butterfly and Peter Guns. They constantly, and you know, and Tara. They constantly bring innocent kids into this mess and getting pregnant and having abortions for storylines. No, ma'am, not here for it. 
But anyway, y'all, I hope they get it together. I hope Mona Scott Yo, steps her game up next season with Love and Hip Hop. Like I told, look, Mon, I'm telling you, if you need some help with casting or storylines or finding, you know, new avenues of how to make Love and Hip Hop pop, holla at your girl, okay? Holla at your girl. I'm telling y'all, I'm here for it. This is what I do. Mona, holla at me. I'm telling you, let's get that boy. But um, anyway, y'all, put it down in the comments. What did y'all think of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the reunion, season one? I mean, sorry, part one, part two. Uh, what did you think about the whole season? Like, personally, again, I was not here for it. Let me know what y'all think. All right, y'all, till next time. Peace and love.